Okay, welcome everybody. Uh, this is a balance training video. We are going to be using the iPad Balance Pro platform here, um, but this training will be for any type of balancing equipment you might have because all of the setup and that physical stuff should be the same. Uh, balance is, uh, when you're doing a balance job, 70% is in your setup. Uh, the other 30% is the software. We've got some neat stuff to show you. Let's start with talking about our setup. Um, you can see I've got a tachometer and a wireless accelerometer in this case. But if you were to have a DAQ box like ours, you would plug your accelerometer right here into channel one and your tachometer cable you see me over here would be into channel two. And one of the key things for your setup to note is that your accelerometer, if you're in the horizontal position here, that's where your light needs to be in that same horizontal position. If I had my accelerometer up top, which I normally don't do because I don't want to fight gravity, I usually try to get it in a horizontal position, but sometimes you may not have the room to do that. If I'd be in that position, my red light would be in line with that as well. If I was on this side, the accelerometer would be on this side and my light would be on this side. So we've got to keep things in line with each other for a proper balance and that's step number one. Step number two is to know what rotation we're turning. So in this case, we are turning in a counterclockwise method. So on this, we want to make sure our setting right here in this button is in the counterclockwise position, which it is. And that pretty much covers our setup to know that everything is set up properly. Um, now, one other thing with the software I like to do is to make sure all my signals are coming from both my accelerometer and tachometer. So we're simply gonna back out of this app and go to the home page so that you can see I'm clicking on the calibration button here. I'm gonna turn the motor on and I'm looking at the acceler accelerometer in this page here you see. So I'm gonna open up the spectrum and see that I've got a nice spectrum and my accelerometer is actually putting out a signal. So that covers that side. So let's now cover our phase sensor and pull up the spectrum on that and you can see I've got a nice um, signal there as well and that's very very important so I know I'm getting a signal from my tack and I know I'm getting a signal from my accelerometer so now once that's done I can go to the main home page and select what type of balancing I'm doing whether it's inbound this particular one, I'm going to do single plane for you on one side, so that'll be a single plane, but I can do dual plane overhung, or I can do dual plane inbound. So we have some choices, but let's simply just open that up and go to the very next step. So the first thing I want to do is clear anybody that's been in here's previous data. So clear all is always a good, no matter what software you work on, I'm sure that's a functionality of anybody's software. And once I've done that, what I like to do is run the spectrum live the whole time I'm doing that. And you can see that here. I can pinch that out and see that my cursor is actually on top of my running speed peak. If I get an interruption of the light, like I'm going to do with my hand over here and put it in front of the light, you can see now my cursor is gone. It's over there in the corner. I take my hand off the light. It's going to bounce back onto that peak where it belongs. So if you have a problem with this cursor bouncing off of that peak because you're on too high speed of a spindle or something like that, you can always go to the manual button, click the manual, and manually move your finger and put it on top, make sure your crosshairs are on top of the peak, and it does the same thing. Now that can't move, so just something to be cognizant of. If your spectrum isn't giving you a nice one times running speed peak and your cursor's not on there, you're not going to get a good uh, trajectory in the polar plot here. So very important. I always run that um, while I'm doing my balance. All it does is cover up your, your um, direction here clockwise or counterclockwise. It doesn't cover up anything else important. And of course we've already decided whether it's counterclockwise and clockwise and that's important. So okay we've got a one, two, three procedure here. It's that simple. You just hit the number one button knowing that everything looks correct in the spectrum, you click number one. And immediately it shows me where it thinks my heavy spot is and where it wants me to put my trial weight. So we're able to use the camera of this device to find out 
exactly where we're going to put our trial weight for step number two. So, and there's another step there too. We, we have to actually weigh the trial weight that we're going to use so we know what weight to put into this box right here. That's the amount of the weight. So let's do the first step first by let's weigh this screw. We're going to turn our scale on and I'm going to record that. Turn this scale on and I'm going to place the screw on top and it's going to tell me I'm 0 0.025 uh, ounces. So I'm simply going to type in, in the appropriate box, 0 0.025 and hit done. And it's wanting me to put it at 238 degrees, which is right here in the polar plot. So I hit this angle view and immediately I get a, a polar plot with the dot right on it on my camera. So what I can do is I can put my reflective tape that I put on when I started. I did skip that step, but you got to put a reflector tape on your, uh, on your setup. And that becomes zero. So I'll put it at 12 o'clock. I will hold my tape here. And you can see very clearly, if you want to get that on camera there, uh, Tim, you can see right at the red light at that hole is where it wants me to put the trial weight. So let's do that. Put this back. We've weighed this, we've already put our proper weight in there, and let's put that right in that red light, right where it asks us to. Now remember, this is a trial weight. It is not a correction weight. So we're gonna be taking this back out probably. So turn the motor back on. And you can see here, when we first took our first reading, we were at 0.16 inches per second with the heavy spot at 58 degrees. We put a trial weight of 0.03 ounces at 238 degrees, and we're about, which actually is wrong. I don't know how that got put in there, but we're supposed to be at 0 0.025, right, Tim? Okay. 0.025, so I might have hit a wrong button. So we, we corrected that and put that in there. <clears throat> but now I'm about to hit the two button, the second step. And you can see we went from this 0.16 all the way down to a 0 0.08 inches per second. But according to the polar plot, our trial weight was placed here. It wants us to place the correction weight, which is giving me a value of 0 0.03, which is very close to the weight that I just put in. But it wants me to put it at 266 degrees, which is just across from 90 here. So let's do that. Let's now move that weight, because this is trial weight, and we're going to move it to where the correction weight says it needs to be. It wants me to put a little heavier screw in there, but I don't have one that just weighs 0 0.005 ounces. So I'm simply gonna move this up one hole, which again, I can use the camera again and find that hole. So let, let's do that. Let's put this at 12 o'clock. And you're gonna see that the hole it wants me to put it in is just above the light. So let's go to that. And sure enough, it's the hole just above the one with the light in it. So that's exactly what we're gonna do. Very, very simple here. So I go to the one just above the light. And get that to get a little traction. Now this works for weight removal as well. There's a function in there that will tell us if we add the drill size, what drill size we would need. Again, I'm gonna run my spectrum. Now look at this spectrum, how small that one times peak was and all these other peaks that are popping up now that we're very well balanced. And I can also see my value of 0 0.004 inches per second already is very, very 10, maybe 15 times below specification. And there it is, 0 0.0049 is my final result. Now I can trim balance a little further if I want, but I can't see going any further the dot is in the center of the polar plot. It shows me where I, my heavy spot was, where my trial weight went, where my correction weight was placed. All that amount is already in everything. We are done. This is a balanced unit. All we have to do now is go to the reporting section. So we hit the report button. It allows me to put my logo, where I am or what company I'm at, the machine ID, which this is a test motor, but we'll leave that alone. I can enter any of that data in. And it also allows me to add things to my report here. If I want to add the spectrums, 
of where we started, where we were with the trial weight, and you can see all these other spectra coming up, knowing we're very well balanced in the spectrum, uh, will now be part of my report. I can also add the map, which it adds the map at the bottom, or I can go to the camera function here and either pull out of the library or, or simply take a nice picture of my uh, setup here for the next guy that might want to balance and pull that in and just check it off also. And now I have that as part of my report. And then one final thing I can do is simply hit here and I can sign my report. And of course I'm doing this sideways so it's not very nice. Right here, save signature, very good. So now that's saved and it's date stamped. And of course that's now in the report. So um, this pretty much concludes. We've balanced one plane in this very simple one, two, three procedure. If you have any questions at all, please reach out to us at GTI at 603-669-5993 or on the web at www.gtipredictive.com. I thank you for your time and I hope this instructional video will be good for any type of balancing system you may be using. Thank you.